How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Thank you for joining us here at Shutter 16 Magazine. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank Absolutely. You so much. Absolutely. I thought maybe we could get started by having you tell us just a little bit about how you first got started in music. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona. And um, ever since I was a kid, just uh, picked up my first instrument when I was like five, which was a guitar. And, um, you know, throughout my childhood and adolescence, all the way up till now, um, just been always writing stories, poems, um, and then later those translated into songs. And um, I, uh, I did a year of um, college for um, audio engineering. Okay. And then I uh, dropped out and moved to LA and just started um, writing for other artists for film and TV, um, sort of sync pitching stuff. And um, I had always had this kind of, or this 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 project um specifically of like what what I wanted to do with this and uh finally during the pandemic um I started I was writing a lot and um I ended up getting uh like a new management team and then um I got uh like a record deal offered during the the pandemic and then here we are <laughs> okay so your music to me when I listen to it it's country, it's new country, but it's pop, it's dark, but it's danceable. It's just a really cool combination of all these different things. And it's being described as outlaw pop. So tell us a little bit about your music and kind of what that term encapsulates for you. Yeah, so outlaw pop is sort of this new genre, this new breed of, of kind of music that I, I want to bring to the world, which is... Um, you know, I feel like country is still very much in a, in like proper traditional country is, which I, I love is still very much in, um, a box. And so I'm trying to break the mold a little bit with that and, um, bring some, some rebellion, some darkness, some, uh, fearlessness and, um, you know, just everything all in, all encompassing of, of being an outlaw and, bringing that to essentially pop music you know so, so you have a new ep that's coming out um mm -hmm. on the 20th i believe it is yeah. <clears throat> and it's called god is dead so i kind of thought after listening to it that it almost feels like a concept album of sorts so tell us a little bit about the title and kind of how that just plays into the stories that you're telling with the music yeah so god is dead um Basically, uh, I, growing up, I was very, um, fascinated by, like, nostalgia, um, you know, very much like the, like, the 1950s and 60s, um, where, uh, um, there was sort of this, like, perfect all-American dream scenario, and, Obviously, as time moved on since then, like, so much has happened, especially for my generation in the last, like, 10 years. It's just been, it's been crazy, like, for, for this new generation of, like, kids coming, like, growing up and going to school and stuff. It's just, it's been nuts. So, I really wanted to take the American dream um, for what it was back in the day and kind of flip it on its head and um, I love thing, all things that have to do with Americana and nostalgia and, um, you know, love watching old, old cowboy, old West, old cowboy, wild West movies. And I really wanted to take, just take all of that, um, purity and innocence back in the day and flip it on its head for sort of a new generation. Like, um, like what? you know, what would the Miss America of today look like? You know, that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, so it, you're definitely right. It is, it is kind of a concept album and it's inspired by a lot of the, the way, you know, the way that, that I'm feeling and my generation is definitely feeling right now, of, um, you know, frustration and, 
uh, and angst and, um, and rebellion and, you know, just wanting to f kind of flip things on its head. I understand that because I, I think I have some kids about your age. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. I was reading about some of the inspirations, I, I wanted to ask you about the crucifix imagery in particular, because yeah. combined with the title, it's such a powerful visual along with the music. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, so God is dead. The song I like to leave it as open to interpretation of possible because as, as we know, God, higher power, religion, right. all is so subjective to, to each individual person um, and what that means, you know, what that means to you, but sort of the, the, the imagery and the like inspiration behind all that was like, I think everybody's had a moment, whether you're religious or spiritual or, or whatever you believe in or don't believe in, where you've questioned, um, you know, is there is there anything out there? Is there, um, you know, is there a higher power? Or am I all alone? If there was a higher power, if there was a God, why is X, Y, Z happening? And sort of all of those existential questions just comp compounding into one. Um, and you know, especially with the last like couple of years with the pandemic and stuff. Um, I think, I think everybody's kind of, you know, definitely those, those thoughts and feelings have come up for, for, for people. Um, so, um, you know, the story of, of, um, of the song God is dead is it's sort of this kind of like post-apocalyptic, like, you know, the world is ending, everything's on fire, Mad Max, like, you know, everything's crazy. Um, you know, God is dead and we're just, we're going to celebrate, you know, what our, we're kind of like, like the rejects and we're going to celebrate like what, um, you know, what that, what that means to us. And, and so it's more, it, it is kind of a celebratory song. Um, as well um not in the not in the sense of like yeah god is dead but like it's it's like you know the world is ending let's embrace it and um whether there is a god or there isn't a god let's embrace that also and and um you know as misfits let's all kind of band together what about the songwriting process for you how do you approach that um so it varies like like for these songs I collaborated with um two very talented songwriters and producers um these guys are like my brothers their names are Cass Dillon and Alex Aldi and so usually I'll come in with a concept uh or a song you know a song that's like partially finished or finished and then we kind of then they they build the instrumentation around that Okay. What about the recording of this EP? What was your experience like in the studio with this one? It was, it was a lot of fun. Honestly, it was, it was way too much fun. And, um, <laughs> you know, I recorded it in New York with, with Cass and Alex and, um, we, you know, it was almost like a, like rock and roll day camp. Like every day was, was just a new day of like, of, of working on, different parts of things. And then eventually, um, you know, we had come up with like a, a large body of work and, um, Tony Hoffer, who's, uh, uh, runs my label and is also a very, very talented producer, mix engineer. He sort of, um, a and r the whole record and really picked out, uh, you know, the ones that kind of designed a complete thought as much as, as possible. So, it was a great experience. And what about um, tour plans once this record drops? Do you have any live dates coming up or like an EP release party, anything like that? Yeah, we have some um, some stuff in the works, um, you know, that's kind of, uh, that we're kind of like working on as we speak that might be pretty, pretty soon. Um, so yeah, just, just kind of figuring all that out now, but stay stay tuned for sure because there'll be updates
Okay, cool. Now, what about um, the songs? How do you think they're going to go over in the live setting? You know, because they're, they're very complex mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So how are you going to bring that into like a live show setting? Yeah, so I was on tour last year, last spring, um, with a band called The Warning. And I actually, we played two of the four songs on the EP. Um, and the crowd loved God is Dead. I think that was probably one of the favorites of, of all of them. Um, what's fun with those songs is in a live setting, you can really play up the rock the rock live element part of it and um you know where the synthesizers are you can insert like heavy guitars and and um really turn up the drama with with certain sounds and stuff so they they translate really well and they're a lot of fun and a lot of you know high energy on stage and did you have a, a backing band that went out with you and would you be having the same people this time or yeah other people I had a band with me. Um, not sure. Uh, it might be a different a different group this time, but um, yeah. But we 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 went out last spring, and it was it was great. Okay, so you definitely, if you're going to hit the road, you anticipate it's going to be a, a full band type situation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I like to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say, um, or who would you say are some of your biggest musical influences? Uh, oh my gosh. You have, you have to have so many from different areas, just based on what I've heard. Yeah, different different genres. I love, oh my gosh, you know, of course, the, the older country stuff, Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, Janiyah Chain, uh, you know, Keith Urban, um, I have a lot of country influences and then some of the newer country stuff like Hardy and Tyler, Ch Tyler Childers, um, Co Wetzel, um, and Morgan Wallen. And, and then on more of like the, you know, my, probably my favorite band of all time is Nine Inch Nails. Okay. Um, so Nine Inch Nails and Nirvana and, um, you know, grew up listening to like a lot of like like classic rock and like um you know like emo like my chemical romance and stuff like that you know um uh but yeah just I have so many different influences and inspirations from from different genres and Mazzy Star I love Mazzy Star um yeah it's it's, it's a lot but it's it's fun to be able to you yeah. know kind of melt Absolutely. And you can hear, like I said, so many different, you know, things going on in your music and it's, it's hard to, it's hard to put it into words. Um, I, you know, people just really have to listen to it to see what you're all about. I, I, I do think that for sure. But what is the one thing that you would like people to know about you and your music? Um, that this music definitely stands for a new my generation and it's sort of a a salute but also like a um a coming of age for outlaws everywhere in every regard and I think it's you know my my one of my like strongest messages I'd like to convey is like really going your own way and and carving your own path and um no matter who what you know, around you is saying otherwise, like really forge your own path and go your own way and, and stand up for what you believe in. And, um, that's, that to me is what kind of outlaw pop really encompasses. Nice. Perfect. Now, please keep us uh, updated when you do get some live dates going, because we'd, we'd love to know about them and, and help you promote them. And if you're anywhere in our neck of the woods, we'd love to come out and uh, see a show. Awesome. I would, Sorry, somebody just, oh, um, yes, absolutely. I will definitely update you. Um, and hopefully there'll be some some updates within the next, uh, you know, couple weeks, so. Perfect. It was a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. We appreciate it. It's so nice to meet you. I really appreciate it. You have Thank a great you. day. And uh, I will, once this interview posts, I'll shoot it over to Ed so he can share it with you and, and you can see awesome. it. All right. Thanks so much.
Thank you. You have awesome. a great day. I really enjoyed the EP, by the way. I really did. I think it's really I really that means so much. Thank you. You're really welcome. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you.